Classic Restos is proudly brought to you by Shannon's, insurance for motoring enthusiasts. Hare and Forbes Machinery House and Pace Farm. Whilst in Detroit, I just have to bring you this. Two 1974 Dodge Monacos. One belongs to myself, but first and foremost, the story of a retired man and his police car on this week's episode of Classic Restos. Nineteen seventy four 1974 Dodge Monaco. They're a rare car and they're an awesome car. And of course we've got movies such as the Blues Brothers as we know that help stamp this model into the map. Today it's the story of a guy and his passion, his career and of course the work car that he remembers. Meet Stacy Stimson a man larger than life and highly respected by his work peers when he was in service as a police officer and is still respected today. Stacy started at the Lapeer County Sheriff's Department in 1974 as a reserve and he was hired full-time March the 1st 1975. Stacy's family owned a dairy farm he left the tranquility of the countryside to become a sheriff's deputy, whilst still remaining his farm duties working as a policeman. Back then, Stacy was only one of a few deputies to patrol the whole county, where today 40 deputies cover the same area. Stacy started a program for children called Safetyville, which became a course that every first grader in the country would have to attend as part of the school year curriculum. The Safetyville program was intricate for the county's youth. He started it from nothing and built it his own way that became nothing but successful. Stacy was also the department head liaison for the reserve program which would put on volunteers for all sorts of areas of work. These reserves would allow police cars to have two man units where they could assist with any capacity of police work in the company of a deputy sheriff. Stacy served the county for over 40 years as a deputy sheriff and was known to be the only one to always show up and never complain or become bitter with the job. Stacy also took an additional role as a sergeant with the Lapeer Township Police Department, maintaining both of these police jobs for almost 30 years. To be a tough cop, you need a tough car and anyone in the business here in the United States will tell you that when it came to cop cars in the 60s and the 70s, the Mopars were as tough as you could get. This beloved, partly restored 1974 Dodge Monaco was purchased through what is known as the Deputies Association, which is a children's benefit for Lapeer County. These were the cars, the cruisers that Stacy etched his legacy around as a policeman back in the day. In 1974, I joined the Lapeer County Sheriff's Department and in those days we were driving the uh, Dodge Monaco's or the Plymouth Grand Furies. They were 440 cars and uh, you certainly could tell by the weight of the car and the rumble of the engine that it was the big motor. The cars were very fast. When you'd sit at a stop sign or a stoplight and the light would change. You had to be a little careful because uh, they would easily spin the tires and everybody thought you were showing off. The uh, cars would do about 140 mile an hour top end. The suspensions in those days uh, weren't as true as they are now, so there were times that you were holding on to make sure that you stayed in that lane. And after half a dozen real hard stops, the brakes would begin to fade and you had to be a little careful of that too. But as reliable, as it could be in those days for a carbureted car uh, running premium gas, they would get right down the road and get you where you needed to be. They were a very heavy car. In the winter months, sometimes in the rural areas, the nurses would not be able to make it to the local hospitals and they would send us out to bring those nurses into the hospital for their shift. I remember pushing snow hood high. And, and if you got stuck, you'd back up and hit it again. And you would do that several times 
to you either got through or they come and got the car with the record service. But uh, most times they wouldn't let you down. It was uh, amazing what those cars would do. The cars were good in uh, chasing or high speed uh, ventures going to accidents because uh, mostly because they had the power. As I said, the suspension wasn't there and you had a different form of driving. You knew to lead in the corners, uh, to slow down in the curves. It was uh, a lesser balance than there is today. But that car would get you there truly just because out of the speed. Uh, there was always times when you needed to uh, pass a vehicle to get going somewhere, spin the car around. That was done by pulling on a gravel shoulder and a good pop of the throttle. It would come right around almost exactly the same spot. So you learn to be careful with that power but at the same time, use it to your advantage. When I seen the Blues Brothers movie, and I saw that car, I knew that was the car that I had driven when I started as a young policeman in 1974 at 21 years old. It was a reaction I'll never forget. This particular car is a replica of the uh, police car I first started with in 1974. The idea came about a dozen years ago when we were looking for something to help us with the local children's benefit. We felt if we took a car like this, replicated it back to uh, the ones that at least I started with in my heart, that it would be good for the local parades, the local car shows, and bring some attention to the uh, children's benefit that we belong to with the Lapeer County Deputies Association. That money is given to needy children and uh, Christmas benefits, things like that. So we found this car at a, uh, a local dealership we took it to a local trade school where the uh, students were able to work on it. They painted it uh, back to the colors. A local sign shop made the decals. It was a 440 car, so when it went to the mechanics, they were amazed that it was uh, still in good enough shape to continue with this. And that's what this car is used for. Fletch, what we have here is a, a radar unit back in the uh, early 70s. And uh, this brand, let me see here, it was uh, made by Enstrom Signs. This is the control head with the digital readout and the uh, calculations. This one's set on the dash of the police car. Plugged into the cigarette lighter, so it is obviously run by the, uh, the vehicle's battery. The two that, the uh, antenna, if you will. This set on the window, the window rolled up. That is connected to that system, and it would calculate the closing rate of the vehicles coming at us. It's adjustable, but that was the early radar units in the 70s used by the Sheriff's Office. I am proud to have uh, been a member of the Sheriff's Department for over 40 years, worked with a lot of wonderful people. We've helped a lot of children through our benefit, and I believe that Fletch is going to talk with my son, who is... Uh, also a sheriff's deputy and taken over a, a career uh, after mine. I spend a lot of time out here. The RT Charger's the real deal. An E49. Remember A Charger? I've always got projects on the go, so Shannon's laid up cover helps protect my restorations. I'm Mopar through and through. It's a passion Shannon's understands. I wouldn't insure my cars and bikes with anyone else. Shannon's, insurance for motoring enthusiasts. Call 13 46 46 for a quote. Heron Forbes Machinery House has been family owned and operated for over 85 years and it's easy to see why. Planning on welding? Look at these welding tables and clamps, air compressors and different air tools, sandblasting cabinets, through to spray guns. Everyone is welcome at Machinery House. There are competitive freight rates around Australia and you can buy online at machinerywhouse.com.au. So remember, Hare and Forbes has the range. Well, I had the fantastic opportunity to meet this guy here at the Woodward Dream Cruise this year in Detroit. How you doing, Brandon? Well, that's, I'm wonderful. How are you today, sir? Great, thank you. You had the morning off work, although you wouldn't think you've had the morning off work. It looks like you're still on duty. Yeah, they let me come down here today and, and enjoy this uh, opportunity with my father, the old patrol car, on behalf of the Deputies Association for the County Sheriff's Department in Lapeer. 
This is what I love about the United States. And if you haven't been here before, this is the real deal. This is what these guys do. The essential services personnel over here do a wonderful job, as they do at home as well. The guy having time off work to bring this car down here, and not just a car, we're talking the 74 Monaco, or the Monaco, depends what side of the bridge you're from. <laughs> what an iconic shaped car made famous from the Blues Brothers. And when I was at the Dream Cruise and saw this car pull up, well, I just had to pounce on you. I seen that, I seen that. You come out pretty quick and, uh, and look me up there. That was great. It was, it was wonderful to see you and talk to you in Virginia there. Having the same model car, I wouldn't imagine that there's many guys that come up to you uh, that has a 74 Monaco like yourself. It's not a ton of them out there. So when they see it, uh, we use it just for the, for the Children's Benefit Association for the department. But when they see that car, not many people say, hey, I have the same one. You know, you get the Blues Brothers correlation. You get the, uh, you know, uh, everybody thinks an old cop car is cool, you yeah. know. So, so it is neat. It's fun. So tell me, Brendan, from the heart, uh, a dedicated police officer, what does this car mean to you? This car, uh, it, it means a lot to me for, for more than one reason. This was about, uh, about the first police car that my father drove on the sheriff's office. Um, he started back in 75. And uh, so, so this car to me means it puts, when I'm in the driver's seat of this, I think of him as a, as a young policeman coming in and, and driving this car and, and working the county um, as, as a young officer. So, so for me being uh, um, in that car, that's what it means to me, it, is just picturing what it was like back in the day to drive around that old car uh, and be an officer in the county. Isn't it amazing we've come, say, 50 years with these cars and yet they're still so good all right the cars of today they're safer they might turn nicer and the brakes are a lot better but all on out performance in a straight line it's amazing that the 50-year technology is not too far behind no no it's really not this car here this will stay up and run with the rest of them i can almost guarantee it a lot of power under the hood of that old car Brandon, tell us about this car, where you found it and what you've done to it so far. So this 74 Dodge Monaco come from um, a township supervisor. I drove it for many years. And when my, when my father and uh, one of his partner one day come across it, it was sitting at a lot that somebody had spray painted up to look like the Blues Brothers car. So this car here actually did, did kind of look like that. So they, they, they bought it. And, uh, and change it back into the police car. That's the first time I've heard that. I, that. First time ever I've heard it go back the other way. Yes, yep, yep, they reverted it back the other way. It didn't look so good with the spray bomb paint job. They took it out and, and like I said, through donations through the county, a lot of folks come together and make it happen, put it back into an old patrol unit. Down to the fine detail of the dog dish hubcaps drilled. Now, now this, was, this was a way of getting some heat dissipation out of there. You wouldn't think that there'd be a lot of heat just around the wheel nuts inside that small hubcap, but the police units, well, they had holes drilled in there, a little bit of heat out. I guess they thought that helped to keep the brakes cool. That's, that was their theory. I guess I don't really understand how much they really do, but uh, that's, that's what you've seen them with back in the day. When I've seen other, other units or, uh, you know, online looking at them, that's what the old patrol cars had back then, the old dog dish uh, center caps. The county that your father used to look after, uh, he was pretty well the only one. There's like 40 guys now. There's 40 cops that look after that county now. There is. There's about 40 road patrol deputies for the Lapeer County Sheriff's Office. Compared to when he hired on, there was just a handful, just a few. Um, you know, and, and they would run by themselves and run the whole county. And we have a pretty big county for just a couple deputies back in the day. Interesting to hear that your father is one of the very few cops that he'd arrest someone and most times, because he was so good to them, they, they'd shake his hand on the way out of the station. That's what I've heard over the years. I've seen it a couple times myself. He's got a wonderful way of dealing with people. Uh, he's a very genuine man, and, uh, and he'd bring him to jail, and they'd shake his hand and tell him thank you. Yeah. So that was really something, and I've always tried to model what I do after him. Well, Brandon, it's been a wonderful uh, pleasure catching up with you. There's no doubt we're going to keep our association for many, many years after this. It's been an absolute pleasure. And for you also to carry on the tradition uh, of the, uh, the markmanship from your father, a police officer, the cars. It's our passion here and in Australia. Ah, it, it just says a million words, Brandon. Thank you so much. Fletch, it's been wonderful to meet you and talk with you. Thank you for your time.
The Monaco was marketed by the Dodge division of Chrysler Corporation and was introduced as the flagship of the Dodge product line. It was marketed for 1965 to eventually replace the Polara model, but even Dodge had their interesting times as well. The full-size C-body 1974 Dodge was completely redesigned for the model year with an all-new unibody platform and all-new sheet metal. However, within days of this bold introduction, the 1973 oil crisis began. Chrysler was quickly spotlighted in the media for bringing out huge new cars, almost rebellious to the pending world circumstance, and as a result, sales suffered quite substantially. Dodge always held a legacy for rugged, well-built workhorses, attracting huge fleet sales with taxi cab owners and, of course, the United States police forces. Classic movies such as Vanishing Point will remind you how well those 1960s Dodge Polaras used to run. The standard engine on all Monacos in 1974 was a 360 V8, hosting a two-barrel carb. The custom option gave you a four-barrel, while the 400 and 440 V8s were also available. And it's quite true what Dan Aykroyd said in the movie The Blues Brothers, this is the 1974 model, the model before the introduction of the catalytic converters in 1975. And yes, indeed, it does run very well on regular gas. We've always had a few cars. They're all special. The T-Bird. Oh, that's mine. The Combi for when we want to get away. The XR8. It's going to be a classic. They're all insured with Shannon's. We've also got Shannon's home and contents cover. Which helps protect our automotive collectibles, tools and memorabilia in the home and garage. If you're motoring enthusiasts like us, it's got to be. Shannon's. Shannon's. Insurance for motoring enthusiasts. Call 13 46 46 for a quote. If you have a restoration project, Hair and Forbes has the tools that you need. Shrinker stretchers, dollies, mallets, bead rollers, profile gauges, professional panel restoration kits, and so much more. Now I warn you, enter at your own risk because you will end up buying something. So come along to your Cap City store or browse and buy online at machineryhouse.com.au because Hair and Forbes has the range. How good were Brandon and Stacey, father and son team? Both police officers. Brandon, a family guy, uh, active, active police officer, and having the time off to come down to the, the parking lot of the, uh, the Hilton Garden in there at, uh, in Detroit, well, Southfield. Um, his father, Stacey, uh, a retired uh, police officer of 40 years in the job. Um, what a nice guy he was. He came down a few days later with Brandon uh, after Woodward. Brandon was on duty on the Saturday morning and he spoke to his, uh, his superiors in his precinct and, and told them what um, he, he wanted to do with, with filming. And they said, what are you waiting for? Get down there and do it. Um, he come, comes on down with his father, gives me a, a, a police patch uh, from the uh, Lapeer Sheriff's Office uh, in Michigan. That's very cool, just getting stuff like that. Um, just the no-nonsense approach of, uh, hey, look, we've got an opportunity of, of being filmed on Fletcher's show, and they just dropped what they were doing and, and came and did that. And, uh, yeah, I think the world of that. How cool is this car, though? Without the Blues Brothers, I guess, the poor old 74 Monaco, well, it wouldn't be on the map. And it is a shame, in a way. Uh, it goes, I guess, with a lot of other cars that were just forgotten about. Uh, incredibly underrated. These cars are a full-size car. They're heavy. They have all the driving attributes of, uh, of a car with a, a, a much um, higher trim level. Um, I've got a 72 Cadillac here and uh, the Monaco rides pretty well every bit as nice as the Cadillac and it's a Dodge. It, it's, a, it's a plain Dodge although uh, my car is the Custom which comes with a vinyl roof and a couple of different uh, trim options. Um, which makes it a bit different to the, the bog standard police cars. This is a car I never thought that I would ever get a hold of. A uh, Blues Brothers Tragic, and I'm not the only one, but I am a Blues Brothers Tragic. Uh, between the years of 1980 and 1990, I, I would have uh, watched the movie 
uh, at least 10 times a year. Um, we're talking a movie of 150 times. I must have seen the Blues Brothers. And I guess I was just mesmerised by this, um, this really cool cop car, which was six years of age uh, by the time that the Blues Brothers was being filmed. And in those times in the United States, it was almost in the era where um, a trade-in value was less than what you'd, you'd get uh, if you crushed your car or, or scrap value, which uh, makes us cringe today when we, when we think of that scenario. How did I get this car? So it gets back to our good friend Murray in Tiffin, Ohio. Uh, a personal friend, as you've heard me speak of many times on Classic Restos. And Murray had this car sitting in his driveway. Um, he bought the car about six years ago. Uh, at time of filming now, in 2019, he had the car roughly six years. He basically bought the car and parked it up, never drove it. So it hasn't been subject to uh, icy roads over there with, with the salt. It hasn't been driven on those roads. The paint is original paint. Um, look, I'd, I'd probably give it 85 out of 100. Uh, I think the, the snow and the ice has probably burnt the paint to give it a bit of a satin sort of a finish, but at least it's even. Remarkably, a bit of a cutback on the, uh, on the hood has, has brought back some shine, and I'm quite happy with that. Um, again, it's that old story of it's an original car with original paint. Nothing's been tarted up. The body is rust-free. The door cards I've had off inside. The doors are beautiful. We're talking a 43,000-mile car here. A genuine 43,000 miles. You can tell if a car's had a hard life by its interior. Its interior is a, is a dead giveaway. Um, you, you look for wear signs there. Apparently an old couple, a senior couple, um, in San Francisco had the car, I would assume possibly from brand new. I don't think the car has done anything, to be quite honest. Even on the visor, on the driver's side, you pull that down, the sticker is still there on talking about how to start the car. And um, the original gentleman, I, I'd like to think he's still alive, but there's a good chance he's not. Uh, but uh, in respect there, he, he's got a piece of cardboard and in pencil, he's written the very first service that the car had back in 1974. And he's put that in a plastic holder just on the dashboard and it's still there. And so I, I love that sort of stuff. So we get back to getting the car and how did I get the car? Well, it was the afternoon. We went to Murray's. Uh, Mark from Shannon's and I, we, we spent a lot of time with Murray every year. This Monaco has been staring at me for five years and it's been a running gag with Murray. Is the Monaco for sale? No, Fletch. Oh, no. No, sir, I'm sorry. I apologize. I, I cannot sell that car. It's, it's far too good. It's, it's probably one of the best examples of a, of a Monaco in the United States. I'm, I'm sorry. I, I can't sell that car, and, and I respected that. Last year, I looked down the driveway and here's, here's the Monaco still sitting there. And uh, with tongue in cheek, I said to Murray, well, what's the deal with the, with the Monaco? Murray, for sale this year? And I got him at a moment where he got a bit restless and was like, well, <sighs> he's looking down at the ground and, well, Flatch, mm, well, it might be. Like, my, my God, he, I, I don't believe this. He, he's, he's actually thinking about selling it. Uh, and five minutes later, there was a handshake done over the back of the car. We, we did a deal and uh, yeah, on a truck, then on a ship, and here is behind me here. It wasn't an easy car to get a hold of. It, it was quite difficult and a little bit of perseverance. Uh, I think what makes Murray um, happy about is to know that the car is being moddy coddled now. Uh, the car, when I found it in Murray's driveway, it was just dirty, that's all. It was just grubby from sitting outside. Um, in Murray's defence, he had a, a sun shield over the rear and over the front to try and protect dashboard and, and, the, and the back seat area, and uh, that did a good job in, in the preservation of the interior. But it was just grubby. There was a tree growing through the grill. What a classic that was. This tree, you're trying to get the tree out, we had limited... Um, area to, to try and uh, get this, uh, this tree out of the grill. So um, Murray had this electric saw and um, we had to saw that out of the grill. <laughs> Mark got himself a beautiful a 73 New Yorker, uh, blue in colour. We had to get that out of the way so we could get the 74 Monaco out of the way. These cars, you've got to think that, remember too, that these cars have, have sat for years and haven't started. Murray just 
puts a battery in there and a bit of fuel down the carburetor and turns the key and starts them up and takes them out the front and does 75 mile an hour up the road. <laughs> These are big heavy cars that are well powered and they do go well. This particular car behind me here is a 360 car, it's not a 440. Um, and I thought to myself, well, okay, I'm still gonna get the car because it's just too good, it's, it's just too original. Um, and to let this slip through my fingers, you look online, you try and find one. It, it, they're impossible to find almost. They're, they're a very, very rare car. And uh, I wasn't gonna let that um, stop me. And I thought to myself, well, okay, well, being a big, heavy car, the 360 may be a little doughy in it. It's not a big block. And, but how wrong I was. I was actually surprised. I've got a 440 car there with the, the 67 New Yorker. Uh, and it goes very, very well. Um, this thing's not far behind it. It is quite surprising how well this 360 package with the 727 Auto, eight and three quarter rear, run in this Dodge. Four brand new tires, caliper kits up front, new brake pads, uh, rear brake shoes, wheel cylinders, new master cylinder. Um, so you know your braking system is good. Uh, radiator, new core or add a core to it. You know, you know we're trying to improve the cooling system on the cars of course the hoses, um, you do that type of stuff and you've got yourself a, re a very reliable car. And of course the big 360 up front does a fantastic job and it produces the note that we've all grown up with. You cannot beat the sound of that wide open throttle, four barrel, bogged down sound that only a V8 can give you. I think all in all, what you have to spend on them um, to bring them back to the magnificent car that they were new uh, is a small investment uh, for the amount of enjoyment that you get back in return. Driving these cars out on the road, the windows down, the breeze blowing through, their own sound, um, the, the feel of these cars, you really can't put a lot of words to it. It's They've got their own environment, and, and I think that that is what makes these classic cars just so special. I'm really looking forward to preserving this car and looking after it. Um, it has an easy life here with Fletch. Uh, all of my cars do. Just to get down the shed with a rag and a bit of polish and just, you know, give them a bit of a cut back and, and uh, just detail them. That, to me, uh, it's just great. I just love it. You know, it's uh, in your own little world doing that with cars. So that's just what I love about these classic vehicles. Like all of my cars, they all get tremendously looked after here uh, in the Fletch stable, and uh, it'll be uh, home for them for many, many years. Well, I hope you've really enjoyed this week's episode of Classic Restos. How cool were Brandon and Stacy, and how cool are these 74s? You know, we met Brandon and Stacy in Detroit this year whilst on the Detroit tour with Fletch. And if you can see yourself discovering Detroit in 2020, why not private message me your email address and we'll send you some details. In the meantime, no matter where you're watching Classic Restos from, until next week, please ride and drive safe. I'm Fletch and I thank you very much for watching. Yes, things I love about an unmolested car such as this. The original trunk mat is inside along with wheel and tyre from 1974. Jeez. Oh. And with Mopar Precision Panels, trust me, when the trunk lid is closed, it's closed. Oh, damn. Hey, can I, George?
you can like and follow us on Facebook at facebook.com forward slash classic restos TV and watch catch up episodes at shannons.com.au. Classic Restos is proudly brought to you by Shannon's, insurance for motoring enthusiasts. Hare and Forbes Machinery House and Pace Farm.